stars. How do stars change over time? How do they evolve? So as we begin to discuss chapter 13 um, today, um, we're going to talk about how stars change, how they live, how they're born, um, what processes they go through as they as they change through their lifespan and eventually how they die. And so that is kind of the, the, the focus of chapter 13. We're going to learn about what causes it all together. In fact, in brief, what causes everything to kind of work is gravity. And so as calculations, as astronomers have done the calculations with these stars, we can predict what's going to happen to stars in the future. And in fact, we can go and we can look out in space. And as we look out in space, we can see stars in various stages of their life cycle. Some who are being born, some who are um, uh, at different stages, and then eventually those, well, those that die. So let's get at that right now. So this will be podcast. Hello. This will be podcast 13.1, the evolution of a star. All right. All right. So as we talk about the life cycle of a star, we want to talk about what holds everything together. And so the key thing that holds everything is gravity. Gravity holds the star together while the pressure of its gases supports it against its gravity's pull. All right. So this is what holds a star together. Remember, we talked about this in a previous chapter, how if you have a star, Okay, gravity, that's the attraction of atoms for each other, causes it to be held together, okay? And the pressure of its gases, okay, that's the internal pressure. The pressure of its gases, all right, that's what um, goes like this, uh, pushes it out, and we reach what we call hydrostatic equilibrium. We've learned about that before, okay? Now, um, a star generates its supporting pressure from energy produced in its core by conversion of hydrogen into helium. Okay, this is what we call what? That's right. Think, think, think. What's this called? That's right. It's called nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion. Okay, that's, what, that's, the, uh, that's the energy source of all the stars. Okay? Now, the issue, though, is the hydrogen cannot last forever. Consequently, the star must change or age or evolve. Okay? So it's like you have a, a source of energy, these hydrogen atoms. And uh, there's only so many of them. And as they change into helium, right, basically you have hydrogen uh, plus hydrogen, and it makes helium. How that works is a nuclear fusion thing, which um, we may or may not go into. We've talked briefly about it, but it's pretty complex how that exactly works. But trust me, that's how it works. And uh, this produces, of course, huge amounts of energy. Yeah, OK. But once the fuel's gone, think of it like a gas tank, so to speak, the star's going to die quietly into a white dwarf, in some cases, or possibly violently, <laughs> violently, into a neutron star or a black hole. So there's a couple of options there. Depends on some things, and we're going to get to that here in just a bit. All right, now everyone gets excited about explosions. So the violent explosions of dying large stars, they seed interstellar space with materials for the next generation of stars, and then actually the elements vital to human life. Okay, so you need certain elements to make hu humans live, to make uh, living things. They actually came from the death of um, large stars. Yeah. So we'll talk about that later. Now, we already have this. I, I asked you to copy this particular chart down into your notebook. And so I don't think that we need to spend too much time going over it. But let's kind of have a chat here. Gravity holds the star together. Pressure supports a star against gravity. Gravity and pressure must balance. We call that hydrostatic equilibrium. So I've already talked about this, right? But this kind of is a great summary, right? Pressure is created by the high temperature in the star's core. Okay. High temperature causes heat to flow from the core to the surface, where it escapes into space as the star's luminosity, which is starlight. Escaping heat is replenished by nuclear fusion in the core. Hydrogen fuses into helium initially. But the star eventually runs out of fuel. Okay, Low mass stars turn into white dwarfs. This is something we're going to get to today. And high mass stars explode, leaving a neutron star or a black hole. So there's a couple of options here. Okay, And actually, technically, here we have a couple of options. One option is a neutron star, and one is a black hole. All right. Note that high mass stars require more pressure to support their greater mass. Greater pressure is produced by higher temperature. Higher temperature produces higher luminosity. Higher luminosity leads to faster um, stuff. And faster fuel usage means it burns out sooner than a low mass star. So this, if you will, is almost the key to this entire chapter. If you can understand this, 
that's a light bulb. Okay, if you can understand this, then you can figure out basically this chapter. Okay, all right, cool. All right, let's go back and kind of realize a couple things before we dive into specific stars. Stars require millions of years to billions of years to evolve, a time that is incredibly slow by human standards. You see, the key is mass. Okay. To understand stars, we must understand the concept of mass. There's really, uh, scientists have divided the stars essentially into two categories. Big ones, not big ones in terms of size, but big ones in terms of their mass. High mass versus low mass stars. So it can be studied in two ways, all right? Now, actually this is important to note too, actually. How do we know what we're talking about here? Okay, basically there are computer models um, that take into account the relevant physics. So all those equations that we learned about in chapter 2 in particular, we learned all those equations. Um, there's a lot more equations, frankly. And they take all those equations and they figure out what's going to happen. So that, that's one way that we know what's going on. Someone says, so how do you know all this stuff? Well, that's here. The second thing is we also have observations. We see different stars in different uh, stages of the star's life. So we can find a black hole and a neutron star, and we can find red giants and yellow giants. We can, uh, in main sequence stars. We can find these out in space. You know, our star happens to be a main sequence star, our sun. But there are other stars, and so, you know, we, and we can see some of them changing. We, we have seen supernovas exploding in uh, the universe um, occasionally. Okay, but here's the key thing. The lifetime is determined by the mass of the star. How much stuff is in it. Not really how big it is, but how much mass it is. You see, that's different. Something can be big and light, if you will, and, or something can be small and heavy, you see, um, but basically the total mass. Okay, so the possible endings of a star's life naturally uh, divide stars into two groups, low mass and high mass stars, with a division at about 10 solar masses. All right, what does that mean, 10 solar masses? We, our sun is one solar mass. But if you have one that has 10 solar masses, or, or greater, 11 or 12 or 30, then that's considered, these are considered high mass stars. So if you were anything less than 10, let's say 9 or 0.1, somewhere in there, these are the low mass stars, and then we have high mass stars. Make sense? Okay. Let's talk about each star one at a time. Let's talk about a low mass star. And as we talk about the low mass star, we're going to talk about, well, we're going to talk about our sun. So what is the, what, what's up with our sun? All right. Our sun initially was born out of an interstellar cloud that gravitationally collapsed over time of a few million years. So basically we have right here a cloud. All right. Now, in this cloud, there's just stuff, atoms, okay? Uh, you could look in, the, in your classroom and you'll see a periodic table. In the periodic table, that's got atoms on it, primarily hydrogens and heliums and other elements uh, and, and nitrogens and whatever. So you have all these elements right here, and because of gravity, that's going to cause them to move inward. Okay, and as they move inward, white pen I think works better, they got closer and closer and closer together. All right, now that took a few million years. All right, then we have fusing of high, eventually when they get close enough, when the atoms get close enough, they, um, the helium, the hydrogen and the helium get into the core. And the sun will, um, well, begins to fuse. That's actually going to happen right here. Um, the sun will then reside in a main sequence for 10 billion years, and this will convert 90% of its hydrogen into helium. All right. Now let's go next. All right. Well, actually, let's go back. And so you can see it turns into a protostar. We're going to learn this in more detail later. And eventually, we have this thing called bipolar flow. It's not terribly important. I think I'm not going to. It's cool, though. And this is our sun today. All right. Once it's completely used, well, once 90% of its hydrogen has been burned, our sun is going to turn into a red giant. It'll be 30 times the size of the sun today. That's much bigger. It will still have, it'll have